Okay, so now it's the next day. The part has arrived. Uh, £940 plus the VAT, so not a cheap item. So let's get it started, let's get it fitted. Before we start, uh, this is a mild hybrid system, so it's not subject to all the rules and regulations that a full electric vehicle is. However, there are still guidelines I've got to follow. I've got to obviously disconnect the 12 volt battery, remove the pass uh, driver's seat and disconnect the 48 volt system and other procedures which we need to follow. So let's get these done. And next time you'll see me, I'll have the starter generator unit off and on the floor so we can take a look at it. Right, so starting with the battery negative, all I'm doing there is disconnecting the negative and putting a, uh, an old battery cap over the negative terminal. I've removed the seat, just propped it up there with a strong bar, a lever bar, and I've disconnected the 48 volt battery there and insulated the cable from touching the battery. This is the drive belt and the adjuster mechanism for the starter generator. It's a two-way tensioner, uh, takes up the slack as well as tension in the belt and you just adjust it and peg it with a 5mm drill bit to remove the belt. These are the two connectors underneath the starter generator that we saw in the previous video. There's also an electrical connector as well. With the starter generator removed, you can clearly see the original, normal, conventional starter motor fitted there. This is for the cold start process. And here on the floor is the starter generator itself, not much bigger than a conventional alternator. Um, two connections, a positive and a negative, and a six wire connector plug. Okay, so we've got the starter generator off. It wasn't too bad a job. Um, new ones in that box just here. And what we also got is four new insulators, which 
go on here, here, here and here. They need fitting on and two new bolts as well. So let's get the new one out and we'll get these insulators fitted and get the um, starter generator fitted back on again, which I don't think you really need to see. So next time, hopefully, I'll be programming the module. Bit of a bonus, new ones out of the box now and the insulators are already fitted. So I don't need to manufacture a tool of any description to get these in. vehicle is connected up to a battery maintaining system connected to the battery positive and to the chassis ground point the jump point and we'll go ahead now and do the programmable module installation so now the starter generators all fitted I'm going to go on to Ford FDRS and do the programmable installation and then what I'll do I'm gonna to have to run the session the test plan session once more and hopefully then we're going to get a fix and a confirmation of successful repair right so we're running through the programmable module installation now for the starter generator motor uh, obviously this is going to be edited because you don't really want to watch in the whole process itself it's a little bit boring just watching a screen but all it does it um, just downloads the, the software installs the software and then basically informs this Ford server that everything's all done and that's it. It's all programmed now. So what I'm doing now, I'm running the previous test that I did on the last video, the one that had the um, program error or the typo I'm just playing it back now but eight times quicker uh, and I'm going to get to the point where when we start the engine up that the contactor latch should show closed and it didn't on the previous video um, and then you can see that the voltage rises up to the foot nearly 48 volts is where it should be so we're just coming up to it in a moment so at the moment there we go it's just showing that it's um, at the same point contactor is open and we've got a two volts at the DC DC converter and as you can see now it's gone closed as I've started the engine up and it's showing 43 volts so that's either an error on the program or a typo um, but this is being run on a different system so now we can see there that the DC DC voltage and the battery output is pretty much the same again with the mild hybrid pack voltage and the output side of things and um, everything's showing where it should do at the moment around about 43 44 volts so everything's looking good at the moment the battery is in a good state of charge and now what it's going to do it's going to run a discharge test and a charging test and have a look at the um, output and input amp amps whilst it's running quite quite crazy figures really uh, more than I expected but um, the input current is does really get to about 920 amps, I believe it does, and the output around about 520, at which point the test ends. So just have a quick look there. It's rising nicely. There we go. So no faults have been found with the system, and that's the end of the test. So I've just got onto the live data side of FDRS now. On the previous video we were showing Forescan. It didn't have really anything for the starter generator motor. I put a few random ones up here for charging currents. Uh, it's a new system to me as I've said before. I've yet to look further into this to know what is good or bad. 
but here's some values for you to have a look at. If you want to have a comment, please leave a comment below. Okay, so we've rerun the test, it's passed the test okay. I've had it under load, been around the blocker several times. No warning lights on the dashboard, so I'm going to call that a fix. Thanks for watching, guys.